Good morning and happy Mother's Day. My name is Mindy Kellner. I'm a new addition to the staff down in the CYRE department. I'm having a lovely time down there. And they've asked me to lead a guided meditation this morning. So I'll ask you to take a moment to get comfortable in your chairs. Place your feet down on the ground if you can. Take a few deep breaths and close your eyes. Allow your body to relax as you focus on your breath. Notice the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe in and out. Now, take three deep breaths, each deeper than the last. In, slowly. Out, releasing tension. In, deeper breath now. Out, and release your worries. In, deep as you can, way down deep in your belly. Out, releasing it all to the universe. Good. Now, imagine yourself walking into a beautiful emerald green forest. Dappled sunlight filters through the trees, casting a warm glow on the path ahead. The sound of a nearby brook fills the air with a gentle, babbling melody. As you walk, you feel a sense of peace and tranquility wash over you. The worries and stresses of daily life seem to melt away with each step. Eventually, you meander into a clearing and happen upon a huge, majestic oak tree. Its branches reach up to the sky like arms, welcoming all to take respite in its shade. You sit down beneath the tree and allow yourself to be enveloped by its calming presence. Imagine that the oak tree is a symbol of all mothering energy. It is a source of strength, wisdom, and unconditional love. Take a moment to reflect on the ways that you mother yourself. Do you nurture your physical, emotional, and spiritual needs? Do you treat yourself with kindness and compassion? If there are areas where you could improve your self-mothering, ask the oak tree for guidance. It will show you how to be more loving and supportive toward yourself. The forest itself is a symbol of the Earth Mother. She is the source of all life and all wisdom. She provides us with everything we need to survive and to thrive. Take a moment to connect with the Earth Mother. Feel her energy flowing through your body. She is here to support and guide you on your journey. Ask the Earth Mother to help you cultivate a deeper connection to yourself and to the natural world. She will show you how to live in harmony with yourself and with the planet. This forest is also a place of healing. The trees, the plants, and the animals all have their own unique healing properties. Imagine that you are walking through the forest on a healing journey. As you walk, <clears throat> you feel the pain and stress of your past experiences melting away. <clears throat> you come to a pool of clear water. The water is so clear that you can see your own reflection in it. Look into the water and see your true self. You are a beautiful and radiant being. You are worthy of love, happiness, and success. The Earth Mother is an endless source of inspiration. The trees, the plants, and the animals all have their own unique stories to tell. Imagine that you are walking the path through the trees, and as you walk, you are open to receiving guidance and inspiration from this natural world. Take a moment to reflect on your experience in the forest. What did you learn about yourself? How can you apply what you learned to your life outside of the forest? 
It's been a lovely journey, but it's time to return. Take a moment to feel your feet on the ground. Take a deep breath. And as you are ready, open your eyes. Feel the energy of the Earth Mother flowing through your body. You are now ready to return to your daily life, but you carry the peace and tranquility of the Earth Mother with you. Thank you. We're going to have the kids sing a little something for you. Um, our choir is going to be back up for them, so you're right. There you go, everybody. Come on down. <laughs> and you're just going to stand right here in front of, in a row right here. cares for us. She comforts us. She cared for my dog. <laughs> they love us and we love them. They keep us safe. They make us incredible food. <laughs> they buy us birthday cakes. They never let us drink salt water. They're nice. <laughs> Excellent.
so I know it says sermon in the bo- in the order of service, but there's no real sermon today. Uh, when we come to the flower communion, one of the best opportunity it gives us an opportunity to discuss some uh, Unitarian Universalist history, and we dis- we have the opportunity during the flower communion to reflect on the creator of the flower communion, Norbert Chapek. His mother, a devout Catholic, his father, an agnostic, he became an acolyte at 10 in 1890 at St. Martin's Catholic Church. In the years that followed, he'd become disillusioned His priest, because his priest was a cynic. At 18, apprenticed to his uncle, a successful tailor in Vienna, Norbert discovered the Baptist church and became a minister. He founded almost a dozen churches from Ukraine to Budapest. Yet slowly, his father became more and more of a liber- or his faith became more and more liberal. He left Bohemia under government threat and accepted a call to serve a Baptist church in New York City. One day in 1919, he sa- he wrote in his journey or in his journal, "I cannot be a Baptist anymore." even in compromise. The fire of this new desire, these new worlds, are burning inside me. Norbert and his wife, Maja Chapek, joined the Unitarian Church in New Jersey in 1921. World War I ended, and his home country, now independent, gave him the opportunity to return to Czechoslovakia. His Unitarian Church was in Prague. Uh, It was the Prague Liberal Religious Fellowship. In just 20 years, his church had 3,200 members. The traditional Christian communion served service of bread and wine wouldn't meet the needs of his congregation because his church, like ours, had people who believed different things. Chapek turned to the beauty of the countryside to the beauty of the flowers. In 1923, he developed the Flower Communion. He asked his congregants to bring a flower to church from their gardens, the field or the roadside, and he invited each person to place their flower in a vase that was there at the church. There was the church community no less unique for being united. Following the service, each person could take a flower from the vase a different flower than the one they had brought. Chapek was a visionary minister with a church ahead of its time, a bold church, a church thinking beyond its doors, beyond what is possible. He led a church that was willing to take risks, to make tough decisions, to bear disappointments, to build a new way, first by building a church, and that church could build up the world. We strive to have a church like Chapek. Chapek's church, uh, his progressive church, and because of the liberal values of his church, his church was, or Chapek was arrested by the Gestapo in 1942. The Nazis accused Chapek of listening to foreign broadcasts and sent him to Dachau. Even in starvation and torture, he held a flower ceremony with his fellow fellow prisoners, finding whatever flowers they could among the weeds of the camp. They testified to the beauty larger than themselves and a love that would outlive them. The Nazis killed Norbert Chapek, but his spirit, courage, and commitment live on today. Those qualities have passed now to us to make them real. His wife, Maja, brought the flower ceremony to the Unitarian Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1940. What we're about to do is not a historical reenactment of something over and done, but an affirmation of our continuity with the generations of struggle for ever-widening liberty. The flower ceremony lovely though it is, isn't a diversion from the ugly reality, but a gentle fierceness which proclaims 
that in the midst of sinister days, there is always the light of beauty. We are here not to recall something that happened, but to remember something that is happening. To remember, to put it back together again. And in that remembering, may we put ourselves back together again, each as a part of the body of this community, out of many, one. Today we celebrate this ritual of solemnity and joy. As Chapek asked his people to bring flowers and celebrate beauty, so shall we. Those words were prepared in advance, not by me, but I took them uh, from the curriculum online with the UUA. In remembering what Chapek went through, remembering the history of our faith, we have this opportunity, as they said, not to ignore the sinister of what's going on, but to remember that there is also beauty around us as well. So in a moment, what will happen is, Lenny is going to come up in a minute, but before that happens, or after Lenny gives a blessing, Christy will start to play some music, and the choir will go first. The choir will go first and gra come up and each take a flower different from the flower they brought, and then they will go sit back down and start to sing. And once the choir starts to sing, you may begin to come down and process forward and each take a flower different from the flower that you brought. Lenny? First off, I would like to say that Ms. Tanil unfortunately is unable to be with us today. And she has a message. Happy Mother's Day to every one of you. And she misses you all very much and is looking forward to seeing everybody much sooner than she can. Let us honor our mothers who through joy and suffering endured so that their children and their children's children might not just survive, but thrive. I call to our mothers, the light and the life bringers who have guided us from darkness onto the paths our ancestors have traveled and now the paths we walk down. All mother, I hail thee and I thank thee for the immeasurable blessings of your guidance and your wisdom. You see all things, even if I may not know them. May your counsel follow us into the year ahead and be the compass from which we navigate. May the blessings of the flowers be upon you all. So let it be. <laughs> 